Good morning, everybody. It's really wonderful to be, and a privilege, to be leading this morning and to have the opportunity to introduce Chris to you all. Uh, Most of you by now, I think, have seen him by sight. He obviously doesn't know who we are particularly yet. Some of us, I think, is beginning to get tabs on. But anyway, it's an absolute pleasure to be welcoming you this morning. So. Um, Chris will be preaching and obviously celebrating communion and it's fabulous that we have Laura and the family with us as well. You're most welcome Laura and I hope this is for both of you the beginning of a very happy stint in your ministry and life. Thank you. Yeah. And over to you for the notices and bands. Thank you very much. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you. So as you can see, I'm holding a Bands of Marriage book, but we'll come to that excitement in a moment. You've all got your pew sheets and the notices are on those, so I encourage you to read those diligently. I'll just draw your attention to some, which are the Lent lunches on Tuesday at Falls and Wednesday here. And I'd also like to draw your attention to the fact that next week we have a donkey So you must make sure you're here next week to see Reverend Pippa preaching and presiding and, of course, the donkey. It's up to you which one you choose to come and see. And you will notice that you're asked to make palm crosses and they're asked for the 2nd of April. If you do them by the 2nd of April, that will be too late because they were needed for Palm Sunday. So apologies for the error on the pew sheet. I take full responsibility for that. It says the 2nd of April, it should say the 24th of March, Palm Sunday. I think that's it for the notices, apart from the bands. So it gives me great pleasure to publish the bands of marriage between Andrew Cameron Small and Amelia Grace Vermeulen. This is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason why this beautiful couple may not marry, you must declare it now. Fantastic. Let's pray for them. Loving God, we thank you for the love that you give to Andrew and Amelia. Be with them as they finalize preparation for their marriage on the 6th of April. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand as we sing our first hymn, number 373, Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So we sit or kneel now for the prayer of preparation on page two of your service booklets. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please do the responses for the Ten Commandments with New Testament additions. Hear these commandments which God has given to his people and examine your hearts. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not dishonor the name of the Lord your God. You shall worship him with awe and reverence. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Christ is risen from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honour your father and mother. Live as servants of God. Let us work for the good of all especially members of the household of faith. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Live peaceably with all. Overcome evil with good. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Be honest in all that you do and care for those in need. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Let everyone speak the truth. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything which belongs to your neighbour. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Love your neighbour as yourself, for love is the fulfilling of the law. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And using the second option for the confession and absolution. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And again, together, the second option on page five. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand to sing the Kyries.
And turning to the inside of the white pew sheet, top left-hand corner, we say together the collect, the prayer for today. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit for our first two readings. Our Lenten readings have illustrated God's historic covenants with his people. Now we hear Jeremiah's prophecy of an entirely new covenant, not based on ancient law, so easy to break, but written deep in the hearts of everyone who longs to know and be known by God. This is a reading from the prophecy of Jeremiah, chapter, chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The task of the Jewish high priest was to offer sacrifices to God on behalf of sinful people. This writer says that Christ, by offering himself to God through his life and death, has become the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. A reading from the book of Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As, was, as he says also in another place, you are a priest forever according to, the, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent sub submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is 648. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. It really speaks to us about how amazing God's love is, how surprising God's love is in its bigness. So, 648. Thank you. 
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, you. O Lord. Among those who went up to Jerusalem to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So in the beginning, there was a perfect relationship between God and humanity. And then this couple called Adam and Eve messed things up. And since then... There's been a line of priests trying to rebuild that relationship. But they too mess it up. So we come to some magnificent, mysterious characters in our Bible, like Melchizedek. Do you know who Melchizedek is? Well, hopefully, by the time I've finished, you will. So if I can borrow a Bible because we're going to need to explore. Thank you very much. Melchizedek is mentioned in our letter to the Hebrews, and the psalm that's quoted is Psalm 110, and that is about being from the order of Melchizedek. But who actually is Melchizedek, and why is he important? And for that, we need to turn to Genesis chapter 14. And I can see some people are already ahead of me. Genesis chapter 14, and it's verse 22, roughly. Here we are. So Abram, as he is then, is coming from a victory that God has given him to help Lot. And he meets this strange gentleman who is a king of Salem. A king of Salem, or Shalem in the Hebrew. And that's short for Jerusalem. But he's not just a king. And this is what makes Melchizedek special. He's also a priest of God Most 
high. So he's a king and a priest. He's not just one of these priests who messes things up. He is a special messenger, and his name, Melchizedek, means king of righteousness. And all through the Old Testament, you have these kings of righteousness helping to steer people back on track. For Abraham, it's Melchizedek. For Moses, it's his father-in-law, Jethro. Melchizedek is a line of righteousness that runs through the entire 66 pages, 66 pages, 66 books of this Bible. And then we come to the ultimate king of righteousness, the ultimate priest from our gospel. And who's our ultimate priest? Who's our ultimate king of righteousness? Sorry? Jesus, Jesus, of course. It is Jesus. Melchizedek is an eternal line of righteousness, which leads us to Jesus, the ultimate king of righteousness. He is the priest who doesn't mess things up. He is the priest who sacrifice for us. We really begin to remember today as we focus on Passion Tide. And he is the king who gives his life so that that relationship between God and humanity can then be restored. But what does that mean to us? What is our mission? Well, we're the body of Christ. None of us are the ruler. And as much as you want me to lead you, I have a leader. And that is Jesus. And as we follow the threads of righteousness in this book, as we meditate on this book, this library, as I call it to the school children, this library of 66 books, our task is to discern the wisdom of God, to live lives of righteousness that are fed from the Ten Commandments that Jane just happened to pick, with no influence from me, but perfect, thank you. That's our role. And do we do that alone? No. It's why we are the body of Christ. Because when people go off on their own, that's when they go away from God. Abraham, as fantastic as a leader of the faith that he was, if you look back at his story, he never does exactly what God asks him to do. He always does something slightly wrong that pulls him away from God. And Moses is exactly the same. He's told to do something. He's actually commissioned as a king and a priest, but then says, I'm a useless speaker, Lord. I can't speak. Let someone else do it. And Aaron comes along. And what does Aaron do while Moses is in communion with God? He makes a golden calf. The ultimate mistake. There's only one king, one high priest. We know who that is. Our job is to follow him as closely as we can, to follow in his footsteps, to do that journeying together. And I mean together. There's no point one person racing off ahead of everyone else. We're to follow Jesus as closely as we can so that we can lead all our communities into the way of righteousness and into that eternal life that Jesus offers us. That's our role, and it's not an easy one. If it was easy, our churches would be full on a Sunday morning. But because it's difficult, but because it's life-giving, we embrace it. And we take the example of people like Melchizedek. We take the example of all the people through the Old Testament where that thread of righteousness goes, 
We learn from them of what it means to live in community and we follow Christ more closely because of their example. So begin Passion Tide with a new knowledge of Melchizedek, with a new appreciation of what Jesus does for us, and let's journey towards Easter and beyond into eternity together. Amen. And I'll give you your Bible back. Thank you. And so we stand now to say together the words that we believe in in encouragement of each other. So we're on page six of the service book. Please stand to say the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we are led in our prayers of intercession. Almighty God, we pray for the worldwide Christian church. We pray especially for those churches who meet in difficult and dangerous circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our bishops, our Bishop Michael and Bishop Sarah, for our churches, Falls, Tilstock and Whitchurch, for clergy, Reverend Chris, Reverend Pippa and Reverend Sue to provide spiritual guidance and to help us to work together in our parishes for the common good. May we delight in sharing in each other's gifts, enabling everyone to make their own contribution. Holy God, may we always be aware of your abiding will and strengthen our faith. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace in the world. May the lands that suffer war, violence and starvation and injustice find peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the ongoing work at the food bank helping to support those who find themselves in difficult circumstances. For our town council, reaching out to support community life in the town. We ask for your blessings on our our community hospital, our care homes 
and those who care for the housebound. For our schools, especially for teachers, for their dedication and commitment. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who come to this place of worship, especially Andrew Cameron Small and Amelia Grace Vermillion, whose bans of marriage have been announced today. Compassionate God, touch, heal and restore all who are sick. Open their hearts and minds to welcome your restoring power so that sickness ends and your healing power begins. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those mentioned on our prayer list and all known to us that we hold in our hearts. Steve White, Oliver Knott, Harry, Isaac, Frieda Caulfield, members of Wendy's family, Alison, Kenny, Sarah, and baby Orlog, George Jones, Shirley Lakin, and Kath Williams. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we thank you for the lives of those who have died. Give hope and faith to the bereaved. God is never absent. For the bereaved families and friends of Zoe Jane Mills, Graham Malcolm Ashley, Patricia Ann Jones, Margaret Ann Ralphs. And finally, in a moment of silence, offer to God any other needs in your heart. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As you are comfortable, please share a sign of peace with each other. Our next hymn is hymn number 493. O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. 493.
And as we say these words for the reception of the gifts, we will say, receive with the gifts of your people instead of receive with this money. So receive with the gifts of your people. God of life, saviour of the poor, receive with the gifts of your people gratitude for your goodness, penitence for our pride, and dedication to your service. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because for our salvation, he was obedient even to death on the cross. The tree of shame was made the tree of glory, and where life was lost, their life has been restored. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and together singing. All glory be to you, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by the merits 
and death and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. Although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, the duty and service that we owe. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offences, and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Lord and Saviour and King continues to teach us, together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and yet still lives for you. And feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
We pray, <clears throat> excuse me, we pray the post-communion prayer together. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please bow your heads for the blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those who you love, today and always. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is 389. I love, having, love being the crucifer when we sing this one. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim. Uh, we are missing out the starred verses. I'm pretty sure they're indicated in your books, but we're not singing verses 3, 4, 6, 8, and 9. There's plenty of verses left to sing. So we're missing out 3, 4, 6, 8, and 9.
Go in the peace of Christ. Or go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you.